Hi Bobcats! In this video we're going to take a look at another example of a problem in the method of initial rates. Our objective is to use the method of initial rates to solve a problem. Um, you know you really have this, you've really learned it, when you can work these problems start to finish without referring to any additional information. So always keep that in mind for the, the level that we're trying to get to. In this example, we're asked to find the rate law for um, the reaction of nitrogen monoxide with oxygen gas to yield nitrogen dioxide. If we look at our data closely in these three different experimental runs, um, between experiment, well, let's see, the numbers are changing all over the place, so let's take a look here. Um, between experiment numbers one and three, it looks like oxygen remains the same. And in that same lump, NO doubles. Um, so it looks like we'll want X to compare experiments one and three. And then that will give us the order with respect to nitrogen. But then we want one where NO remains constant or a we want a pair where NO remains constant and um, O2 changes. And that looks like it's going to be experiment three and two because between three and two, NO is the same, but from um, three to two, the oxygen changes by a factor of three. So it looks like those will be our pairs. We'll do experiments uh, one and three and experiments two and three. Um, remember that when we go to write the rate law for the reaction, we're going to say that the rate is equal to a constant K, and remember that's a lowercase k, times NO raised to some power and times O2 raised to some different power. When we solve this problem, we're looking for actual numbers for K, M, and N. All right, so let's take the ones that I marked in purple first, all right? Um, that would be experiment one and experiment three. And when you compare those, the bigger numbers are in experiment three. So we want to take experiment three divided by experiment one. When we take the numbers for the rates, we're going to have 5.64 times 10 to the minus two divided by 1.41 times 10 to the minus 2. That will be equal to k. Um, let's see, and then it's going to be times NO and O2. Um, NO in experiment number 3 is 0 0.0252 raised to the nth power. And O2 in experiment 3 is point 0, 0.0125, all raised to the nth power. Uh, for experiment number one, we'll have the same k. And in experiment number one, NO is 0, 0.0126. We're going to raise that to the m. And O2 is 0, 0.0125 raised to the nth. OK, let's simplify stuff as much as we can here. On the right-hand side of this equation, k cancels out with k between the top and the bottom, so we'll get rid of those. And also, the O2 values are exactly the same in the top and the bottom, so those are going to cancel out. On the left-hand side of the equation, 5.64 times 10 to the minus 2 divided by 1.41 times 10 to the minus 2 is equal to 4. So we have 4 is equal to, and then trying to rewrite that, that right-hand side a little bit, we can move that exponent of m outside of the brackets. And in the top, we have 0 0.0252, and in the bottom, 0 0.0126. Um, if you look at what's inside of the brackets, that gives us a value of 2 raised to the m. And so we just need a number for m. The value of that exponent that makes this equation true is 2, because 2 squared is equal to 4. And so this reaction is second order with respect to NO.
To continue working this example, we're using the idea that the rate is equal to k times NO, and we found on the previous slide that this is NO squared, and now times O2 raised to some still unknown power that we're going to solve for, and also we're going to need still to solve for k to get an actual number for k. So we were going to compare experiments 2 and 3 in order to figure out the order with respect to oxygen. And so looking at these, the bigger numbers are in experiment two. So we're going, we, we will take experiment two divided by experiment three. And in terms of the rates, that will be, oh, yes, experiment two is the larger number, sorry. Look, looked funny for a moment. We have 1.69 times 10 to the negative 1 divided by an experiment 3, 5.64 times 10 to the minus 2. Remember with the negative exponents, uh, 10 to the negative 1 is bigger than 10 to the minus 2. And then that'll be equal to k times no squared, but the nos are going to cancel out because they're the exact same number, and then times o2 um, let's see, in experiment 2, O2 is 0 0.0375, and that's raised to the nth power. And then from experiment 3, we're going to have K times NO squared times 0 0.0125, all raised to the nth power. Now, in both experiment 2 and experiment 3, the value of NO is 0 0.02. 5, 2. Uh, that gets squared, and since it's the exact same thing in the top and the bottom, NO2s cancel out. K is a constant, so it cancels out between the top and the bottom. And then um, since uh, what's left, um, we've got a number in the top raised to the nth, and we have a number in the bottom raised to the nth, I can pull the n outside of the brackets and have 0 0.0375 divided by 0 0.0125. All right, let's clean this up a little bit. Over on the left-hand side, the uh, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 1 divided by 5.64 times 10 to the negative 2. Actually, let me go ahead and run that through my calculator so I can get you the exact number on this one. That is going to be 2.996, so basically that's just 3. And then over on the right-hand side, 0 0.0375 divided by 0 0.0125 is 3 as well, and that's still raised to the nth. And so the only way this equation is true is if n equals 1, which means it is first order with respect to oxygen. All right, so we now know that our rate law is equal to K times NO squared times O2 raised to the first power. So from that equation at the very top of the page, we can come up with, a, uh, with an expression for K. So, um, I'm going to first flip the reaction, uh, or I'm sorry, flip the equation left side and right side. I'm going to have K times NO squared times O2 is equal to the rate. And now to get K by itself, I'm going to divide both sides by NO squared and O2 squared. So K is equal to the rate divided by NO quantity squared and O2. We can plug in numbers for this. If this was a lab, like the Chem 1142 lab, you would want to take this expression and use the data from experiment one, get a number, repeat that for experiment two, and repeat that for experiment three, and then take an average of all three K values to get your best approximation to the rate constant. 
In this case, this is canned data. All the numbers should work out to be the same. And so I'm just going to take experiment number one and plug in here. We have 1.41 times 10 to the negative 2 divided by NO squared, which is 0 0.0126 squared, and O2, which is 0 0.0125. And if I run those numbers through my calculator, 1.41 times 10 to the negative 2 divided by 0 0.0126 and divided by 0 0.0125, we end up with a number for the rate constant of 89.5. If I look at my units on this, um, the rate is molarity per second. The um, numbers in the bottom are molarity squared times molarity. So um, it looks like we're going to be left with units of molarity to the minus 2 and seconds to the minus 1. Um, here, let me pull a different color to do just the units. Um, here's where, where I'm getting the units from. In the numerator, we're going to have molarity per second. And in the denominator, we're going to have molarity squared times molarity. So the molarities cancel out. Um, it leaves us still molarity squared in the bottom and seconds to the minus 1 in the top. So just moving those both to the same level, dividing by molarity squared is the same thing as molarity to the minus 2. And then we still have seconds to the minus 1. And so that's where those units are coming from. And I'd like to reiterate one more time um, about partial orders and overall order. The partial order is the exponent on a single chemical, and then the, you get the overall order by adding up all of the exponents. So the partial order with respect to NO is 2, and that's this exponent of a 2 right here. The partial order with respect to oxygen is 1, because when there's no exponent written, it's understood to be a 1. And then the overall order is going to be 2 plus 1, which is equal to 3.